the song we're going to sing is called Always Only Jesus. And um, it just talks about how his name can do so much, just speaking his name. Um, and it just spoke to me. I just, I just so thankful for the name of God that when we're in situations or we have things that we have someone to call upon. There's no greater love than yours That tells the dead to sleep no more With just the sound chains will break There is freedom in your name There is freedom in your name greater love than yours that tells the dead to sleep no more with just the sound chains will break there is freedom in your name there is freedom in your name every breath I'm breathing will be filled with parade just for one name always only Jesus let my heart cry holy as my hand be raised just for one name always only Jesus the earth flood the sky let all creation magnify the righteous will sing as evil shakes there is power in your name there is power in your name every breath Everything will be filled with praise just for one name, always only Jesus. Let my heart cry holy and my hands be raised just for one name, always only Jesus. Sing the name that hushed the sea. Sing the name that hell won't speak. Jesus, hallelujah. Sing the name that took on sin. Oh, sing the name that finished it. Jesus, hallelujah. Sing the name that hushed the sea. Sing the name that hell won't speak. Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, sing the name that took on sin. Sing the name that finished it. Jesus, hallelujah. Every breath I'm breathing will be filled with for one name, always only Jesus. Let my heart cry holy and my hands be raised. Just for one name, always only Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what? Wrong song. <laughs> Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? 
I was lost, but he brought me out. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last. He has ransomed me, oh, his grace runs deep. I was lost, a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Oh, he died for me, who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. And I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken, for I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you, God, and I worship you, God. Lord, thank you for being a good father, God. Lord, I praise you, God. I am who you say I am, God. I believe it, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Isn't it great to know that you have such a loving father? Um, I know some people haven't grown up with you know, I grew up with a father who loved me. I was blessed. I grew up in a family that we loved each other, and I was, I was blessed to be in that. And I, I watched my husband, who was a good dad, and um, he loves his kids almost too much sometimes. <laughs> Spoils them pretty much. My youngest is in college, and he, uh, his car broke down. And so we decided to get rid of it because it was an older car. We were going to, I was like, he is going to go the winter without a vehicle because he can do it. And I was like, I'm not going to get into getting a car for him right now. It's not. And it just has bothered my husband because he's like, I don't want him walking in the cold in Maine. And I'm like, he can take the bus. But Leo's like, I don't want him walking in the cold. He just, you know, and so it's just, it's just weight on him. And I just watch it, you know, and I just, he's just such a good dad to love his kids so much. And our father, if the Bible says, if we're like that to our kids, how much is he like that to us? That we would sacrifice things. You know, my husband bought him a got him, but we're giving him our car, and we're getting a different car because, you know, if, if we're going to give gifts like that to our children, what will God do for you? Because he loves you. 
You know, he loves you. He loves you so much. And even though we don't deserve it sometimes, because my kids are not perfect, but even though they don't deserve it sometimes, you still love them and want to bless them, and you want th good things for them. He has good things for you. And this, that song we sang was about, a, you know, a, a good father, but we're singing good, good father now, and I'm just so thankful that we have that. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Your good, good father, it's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, and I. Many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Peace so unexplainable, I, I can hardly think as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, love, your good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Happy New Year, everybody. 2023. Who would have thought? Is this the year that Jesus is coming back? Think about that. We don't know, do we? 
The Bible says we, we, we don't know. But do you want to be ready? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I want to be his disciple. I want him to, when he comes, I want him to know me. Yes. I want him to recognize me. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to recognize him. If you weren't in adult Sunday school this morning, you missed it. Let me say that again. If you weren't in adult Sunday school this morning, you missed it. We talked about where we're going as a church. So you're already behind a little bit. I'll be sending out some slides. Um, I, I would highly, highly encourage you once again, if you can possibly... Get yourself to shift that morning schedule. I know you're not, you know, I, I, granted, there's, there's some of you that, you know, that maybe work Saturday night and, and, uh, and, and have a hard time getting here, and that's okay. I, I absolutely understand that. But if it's just a matter of that's not my normal Saturday, Sunday morning schedule, um, this isn't normal. It's not a normal world. Amen. Jesus is coming. And we need to prepare ourselves. I, just, please try to change your schedule around and be here for 1030 on a Sunday morning. I mean, you'll be blessed. There is one, one more participant guide up here, and I can get as many as we need. Uh, we haven't started our new curriculum yet, so you've got a, a week there to, uh, to think about this. And, and again, if you, can, uh, if you can make it at 1030 in the morning, you will be blessed. Um, will it be a little bit of a a hassle, getting yourself together and changing your routine. Yeah, it will. I'm not going to lie to you. It'll be awkward. It'll be rushed maybe a little. It will not feel um, quite right at first. But before you know it, it's just going to be another Sunday. All right, enough of that. Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. By the way, I will be sending out the slides to, to let everybody know what we talked about this morning because it, it is kind of where the church is headed in 2023, and I want everybody to, to be on track. But this morning, I want to talk about something different. First Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 12. First Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 12. Read a fairly lengthy passage of scripture here. We'll go all the way down to verse 24, I think, this morning. I still hear pages flipping, so I'll give it just a moment. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 12, Paul writes, We ask you, brothers, to acknowledge those who labor among you and are appointed over you in the Lord and instruct you. Esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brothers, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, support the weak, and be patient toward everyone. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, examine all things, firmly hold on to what is good, abstain from all appearances of evil. May the very God of peace sanctify you completely, and I pray to God that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, who also will do it. Let's pray one more time. Jesus, we love you and praise you and pray that you would have your way in this place. Let your word go forth, Lord, with anointing. I pray, God, that you would speak to us today, that you, Lord, would uh, minister to every need, to every heart. God, draw souls ever closer to you and change lives in this place by the power of your word and the presence of your spirit. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. You may be seated. So we've got here a passage from Paul, and he ends the passage acknowledging that God is sovereign and is able to sanctify us completely. He says that the, the, the God of all creation is able to sanctify you completely. 
That is to make you holy, to make you what you need to be, to set you apart from the world and make you his chosen people. God is able to do that. This is Paul's prayer. May the the very God of peace sanctify you completely, he says in, in verse 23. But he precedes that with a a lengthy passage letting us know that yes, we have a God who is able and yes, we are saved by the grace of God, but you, you have a role to play in all of this. This is not a passive walk that we have. We don't just latch ourselves to the coattails of Jesus and say, have your way, God, just do it. Go ahead. I'm I'm ready to receive. No, there's some giving that's involved, and I'm not talking about Christmas for Christ. I'm talking about giving of ourselves, amen, and walking the walk that God has called us to, amen. He has called you. You are chosen people, and he, uh, Paul, gives us uh, some, some, some very direct guidance here on what that means in our lives. The, the first three verses, uh, four, four verses, 12 through 15, talk about serving others with humility. And, um, and yes, the, the very first part of that talks about um, having consideration and respect for leadership. And I, it's kind of self-serving and awkward to, to be talking about that. But, but we're talking about anybody that is set over any type of a group. I'm talking about Sister Piper, who leads our, our worship team. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about uh, bro- brother, brother Just, who, who, who's, who's leading our, our men and, and our youth right now. I'm talking about Brother Wong, who, who is the assistant pastor. I'm, I'm talking about anybody, anybody who has been set. I'm, I'm talking about... Sister Witt with Coffee and Connect. I'm talking about Brother Carlos with the, with the cleaning of the church. Anybody that has been set in a, a role where they have to, to kind of organize and direct, treat them with respect and, and, and dignity, not, not because of who they are. And this is, this is where it's important. He says, esteem them very highly. I mean, it's put them up on a pedestal. Why? Because they're so great? Because for their work's sake, Right? Because we have to acknowledge that, again, we all have a role to play. And it's not, it's not lifting up the person, it's lifting up the work. Right. Amen. Right. So that's what he's telling us here, is to have respect and consideration for leadership. And I can tell you, having been in the world in a leadership role for many, many, many years, that leadership is hard. It is. When everything's going great, it's, it's a wonderful thing. But there's times when you're going to have hard conversations with people. There's times when you have to do what you don't want to do. Uh, you know, there are so many people in the world today that kind of leaders I'm talking about that when it comes time for performance reviews, just kind of blow past them and, and everything's all fine. Everybody's average. That way I don't have to really tell people where they need to improve. And, and I don't have to, to tell people how great they are, even better than me. I just kind of level things up. Le- leadership is hard. Yeah. It's hard and it's, if, you, if you do it right. And so this is what, what Paul is talking about, is, is that we've, we've got to have consideration and respect for leadership. But then he talks about avoid disputing and seeking harmony. Right? This is something that we've heard a lot of, and this is something that plagues the church sometimes. Paul is talking to the church here. And he's, he, he, there's, it's easy for people to get under our skin. We are so different and, and we come to the, the, the church, and, and yes, we're all born into the church. We're, we're baptized in Jesus' name, and we're filled with the same Spirit of God. But we are all, each and every one of us, different. And we don't do things the same as other people, and sometimes that gets on our nerves. <laughs> Some people don't do things the way we would do them or say things the way we would say them. And, and, and sometimes people just kind of, yeah, I, just, I can't even put my finger on it, but I don't like it. Deal with it. Right, right, right. Let the Spirit of God rise up in you and, and think about Christ and what he had to deal with. And for some three years, he walked with a man he knew was going to send him to the cross. And he ministered to him. 
And there are no doubts that there were, well, we, we read it in scripture that there were disputes. Who's going to be the greatest? I am. I'm going to be the greatest. Uh, and and, and the, the mother of James would hey, hey, Jesus, Jesus, bring my sons over. Make them your, your, your leaders. All the things that Jesus had to deal with, just with the 12, let alone the thousands that came to him with all of their trials. Uh, you'd think maybe that the, the, the hundredth person in line that was standing there to be healed that, that said, I stubbed my toe last night and it really hurts. You think maybe he was a little irked about that? But you know what? I bet he healed them anyway and sent them on their way. But there's things that we just have to deal with because people are people. We have to love people the way that they are. Why? Because Jesus loves you the way that you are. Thank God that he does. Because if he looked at me sometimes the way I look at other people, I'd be in a world of hurt. But he loved me and he saved me. Amen. And he treats me, well, like, like the Apostle John. I'm the one that Jesus loves. Amen. That's how people should feel about you. Now, I, 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 trust me, if someone's annoying, they know they're annoying. They do. They do. You show them love, and, and man, it will be magnified in their eyes. They'll, they'll love you back, and they'll, they'll treat you with the same respect that you treat them with. I'm talking about disputing here that, that can happen inside the church and, and disharmony. We need to seek harmony. We were in music practice this morning. Sister Witt was playing the keyboard and I was playing the guitar. And all of a sudden I heard in my ear, there's two, now not that I have the greatest ear for music, mind you, but I heard we weren't playing the same chord. And I, 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 I said, well, time out, I don't think we're playing the same chord here. And it comes, come to find out we weren't, but they were okay because the two chords were in harmony. And that's how we need to be as a church, right? We don't all have to be playing the same chord. We just need to harmonize. We need to work together. Amen. Because we are one body. And the ear can't tell the nose, I don't need you. And the toe can't tell the finger, I don't need you. We all need each other. This is the message that Paul is bringing across here. He says to gently, gently warn those who are disorderly. So yeah, if there's, if there's somebody that, that is, is kind of not doing what they need to be doing, and somebody that has done you wrong even. The Bible has, has scripture for that. Let them know that, hey, I, I don't think that was right. I love you, but you know, here's, here's how, how that made me feel. Talk through it with the person in this, then bring someone else into the, into the conversation if you have to, but it, it's gently, gently, right? That's the key. It's treating each other the way that we want to be treated. I've heard that before somewhere too. And that's what Paul is talking about here, that we need to, to work together in this, this beautiful body that God has called together and make sure that the little toe and the big toe are on the same sheet of music, but they're also working with the elbow and the, and the arm, doing, doing, and they're all working together to accomplish the same thing, this beautiful body of Christ that, uh, that God has put together. So, so we're going to gently warn those who are disorderly, and trust me, I will, I will seek to do that, amen, from a, a leadership aspect. If there's, there's something that is, is out of order, I will absolutely try to gently correct that. Um, and encourage the immature and support the weak, he tells us. So the idea that we are not all at the same spiritual level is not lost on Paul. And even as the, the early church, we are a growing church. And new people are coming, and some established people are here. And this is one of the things that can bring a little disharmony sometimes, right? Um, I, I spent a week with my, my grandchildren. And I gotta tell you, they're, they're, they're grown much older now. When they were younger, I, I could only take them in small doses. Right? Because it just, I can't keep up with them. And oh, it, it just wore me out. And, and, and it's a little bit better now that they're a little bit more mature. But, but this same thing can happen with, uh, with, with ones that are, are new, with young ones in the, in the church. They can be, not all, but some can be high maintenance, if you will. That's, and, 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 and that's okay. Because we're, we're to be patient with them. We're to, we're to encourage them. 
if, if, they, if they're at a place where they haven't matured in Christ. It's not call them out, why aren't, you, why aren't you growing faster? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? No, that's not our job. Our job is to encourage the immature. It's to support the weak, Paul said. Right? We're, we're helpers. We're to help each other, right? And, 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 and that's, isn't that what the, the body does? We, we tend to, to our, our bodies, that is, will we'll kind of make up for, um, for faults and flaws. I've got a really bad left eye because of an injury that happened decades ago. Um, and, and my right eye kind of makes up for that. And for a while after the injury, you know, I couldn't put a spoonful of sugar in a cup of coffee. My depth perception was so bad. But, but my body compensated for the, for the weakness of that one member. And now it's almost like I, I, can, you know, do, I can see anything, although you're all just kind of blurs to me right now. But, but they, they work together is what I'm saying. And um, it, it amazes the eye doctors when I go to them because they're so totally different. One eye is farsighted, one eye is nearsighted, and the prescriptions are so odd that they have to put special notes on it. Yes, this is the correct prescription. But they, they found a way, as different as they are, to work together so that I can see. Amen. Talking about unity of the body of Christ, working together, each and every one of us. If there's a weaker member, we got to make up for that, right? we got to help them, help to strengthen them, amen, and bring us all together, amen, so that we can accomplish the mission that God has set forth for us. And be patient to everyone. That's, that's another thing that he admonishes us, patience, right? This is a fruit of the Spirit. We need to allow the Spirit of God to rise up within us. In and of ourselves, we can't be patient enough. Amen. To be a, a thriving member of the body of Christ, we will. If our if it's up to our flesh, you know, we're, something is going to going to put up a, a brick wall in in front of us, and we're either going to you know have disharmony, disunity. Something's going to happen where there's going to be some sort of dispute, and we're going to close ourselves off and say, "I'm just here." But but that's not what we're called to do. We're called to be patient, right? And and realize that this might not be exactly the way that I would do it. Um, but you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust that God is orchestrating things and, and that everything is going to work together. I'm going to pray to God. If I want to see a change, I'll pray to God. And, and if the pastor is doing something that's, that's irking me or, or bothering me, I will go to the pastor and talk to the pastor. Amen. I hope. I hope. Um, that I have uh, made myself available and, and open enough that you feel comfortable doing that, and you ought to, um, and, and you ought to, to be patient not just with leadership, but patient with each other. Right. And so, so be patient toward everyone, the Bible says. Hard, tall order. Uh, see that no one renders evil for evil. Don't seek payback. If you've been wronged, the the very worst thing you can do is, is you know, try to, to, to pay somebody back, to, 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 to bring retribution, and, and Jesus was really, really clear about that. You have to forgive. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. You've got to forgive. If you've been hurt, you've got, can I say that one more time? If someone has hurt you, you have to forgive them because God wants to forgive you, but he can't do it if there's unforgiveness in the way. So serving others with humility. This is, this is one thing that we're called to do as children of God. Serving God with gratitude, verses 16, 16 to 22. Um, Paul, Paul writes about us the, the way that we serve God, right? To, to, to rejoice always. That's easier said than done, isn't it? Right? It's, it's, yeah, it's a mindset. And there are times, God knows there are times when, when we're down, when we're hurting, but there's this idea that you need to let the Spirit of God rise up within you and give you hope. This is, this is where you know, faith comes in, and, and that passage that Paul writes to the Romans, that tribulations work patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. If you haven't been through it before and gotten through it, someone else has, and you need to draw on their experience. Hope is always there. The worst things can happen. Your house can blow up, brother. 
but you know what? Everything's going to be all right. Yeah, there's a little few trials and tribulations, but God kept you safe, didn't he? Amen. God is able to do that. And well, th bad things happen to good people. Yes, they do. But you know what? It happens for a reason and it's all in God's plan and we don't have to understand it. We just need to try to rejoice that we know our God. You don't have to rejoice in what happens, amen, but rejoice that God is in it. No matter what happens, I serve a God, amen, who loves me. And at the end of this world, this totally messed up world, God's going to be there for me and he's going to usher me into paradise. Amen. He's going to bring me to a place where there's no more tears and no more pain and no more sorrow. Amen. And so I can put up with a little junk in this world and still rejoice because God, amen, is there for me and he'll always be there for me. Rejoice always. Amen. Try, try to... to, to to, to pray without ceasing. And yes, that doesn't mean 24-7 being a monk close to yourself in a cave somewhere. It means being in an attitude of prayer. It means knowing that God is there. I, I talked before about how that when I was in the Middle East, the, um, the Muslims would carry with them these prayer beads, um, just a, a small string of beads that always, they, and, and I didn't know what they were at first. They're, they're just kind of jingling them in their hand constantly. Their hand's always in motion with these beads. And, and I finally asked somebody what this was all about. And, and, and what it is for them, it's just a reminder that God is there. Now, it's not an idol. They don't, they don't see this as an idol. They talk about oneness. They are oneness. Now, they, they don't have God right but they believe that there's only one God. And, and, and they also believe that, that you can't set up an idol, but, but they've got this, this little set of beads in their hand that's always, always there and always kind of on their mind or in the back of their mind. And this is what I think Paul is talking about when he says pray without ceasing. Not the beads thing, right? But, but something, something that's there with us to remind us that God is there. It's easy in this world to get lost in the world. It's easy to get lost in work, to get lost in, in play, to get lost in, in whatever you're doing in this world, and to forget that God is there with you. But being in an attitude of prayer is, is, is not cussing when you hit your thumb with a hammer. It's, 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 it's knowing that God is there to hear whatever you're going to shout. Amen. You can call on his name. Ow, help me, Jesus. But, but it's, it's just knowing that he's there. Are you with me here? You, you understand what I'm saying? That, that God is always, this is what an attitude of prayer is. It's knowing that God is there with you. And it's not just for the times when you hit your thumb. It's for the times when temptations and trials come your way. It's when the times, it's, it's, it's the times when the world might be flittering something in front of you, dangling that shiny object that knows that, that knows deep down you've got a part of you that, that is drawn toward that. I mean, an attitude of prayer will say, uh-uh, not even going to go there. Not going to look at that because if I look at that, I'm going to take a step toward it. I mean, this is what I'm talking about when, I, when, when, when Paul says pray without ceasing. It's being in that attitude of prayer and recognizing and realizing, being in constant communication with God. That doesn't mean talking incessantly. It just means that whenever your need is there, you reach out to him because you know he's there with you. And it means being sensitive to his voice. So that you can feel that, that prick in your heart, that conviction when, when something does come your way that might be a hazard to you, that you'll, you'll be sensitive enough to God to hear him say, whoa, time out, don't do that. And his word will rise up within you, amen, saying, man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You don't need that today, amen? So, so understand that, that... Um, that we need to, to always be in that, that attitude of prayer to Emmanuel, God with us. And that's who our God is. That's who Jesus is, God with us. He's here. Whether you realize it or not, he's here. Just keep the connection open. And then be thankful to God. Be thankful for, to, for, for all that he's done for you. In everything, give thanks. For the little things, for the big things. Just, just thank God for the, for the breath of life that, that, he, that he gives to you. 
and, and, and yeah, it's okay with, if, if you're just kind of in the middle of doing something and you realize you, you just, just to blurt out, thank you, Jesus. I do it all the time. Uh, people probably think I'm crazy. But it's because God come, came to my mind. God was close yes. enough that he came to my mind, and I just say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Just to, to let him know that I'm, I'm thankful for what he's done for me, Amen. for the things that I don't even know that he's done for me, because I know he's kept me from things that, uh, that I don't even know about, but he's kept me. Amen. He's, he's called me. He's preserved me. Amen. And I thank him for that. So serving God with gratitude and then allowing the spirit to lead us. In, in verses 23 and 24. And this is, this is where the, the part comes in where, where God is, is going to do a, a work in us. So all of, everything that I've talked to you up to this point is stuff that we need to do yep. as Christians. Yep. Right? We, we, now, God's Spirit will empower us, absolutely. But, but we need to, to set our minds on doing these things. Well, that sounds like salvation by works. No, God, we're saved by grace through faith. Okay, that's how you're saved. If it weren't for the grace of God, you could do a million things and it ain't going to save you. But, but by the grace of God, he, he, he allowed you to be saved. So ought you not to act like a child of God? That's what Paul is telling us here. This is the way a child of God should comport themselves so that God can do a work in you. God wants to sanctify you. He says, be sensitive to God and don't let the world harden you. It, the world wants to. It wants to harden your heart. The world, the world is trying each and every day to drive a wedge between God's people and, and the God who loves them. And it's doing that through temptation. It's doing that through mocking. It's doing, you name it. It's, it's pulling out all the stops because it knows. The devil knows that he's only got a short time. And, and the world is going to spiral even quicker downhill than it is right now. Amen. Be sensitive to God. And, and know that, 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 that God, amen, is there with you. Don't let the world harden your heart. Don't, don't condemn words or actions that, that, <laughs> that could be supernatural. So I, I got to go back. Don't, don't quench the spirit. Um, the spirit of God when we're, when we're born again, is so powerful within us. It's a, such a power that we feel. It's, it's empowering. It's uplifting. It, 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 it exhorts us. It brings new life to us. But we can quench that spirit. And, and, and the way that that spirit gets quenched is through our own flesh and through, again, yes, the, the world can do that to us. But I, I, I hesitate here because I put too much emphasis on what the world is trying to do to quench the spirit. We can quench the spirit of God in our lives. We can focus too much on ourselves and not enough on God, and we can quench the spirit of God. God wants to do a work in your life. Let God be God in your life. Don't quench the spirit of God. He didn't give you his spirit for a one-time experience of speaking in tongues. That's not why he gave you spirit. He gave you his spirit to empower you to be witnesses. Yes. Yeah, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, yeah, but unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And yeah. yeah, we live right here smack dab in the middle of the uttermost parts of the world. And God wants to use you. God wants you to be his witness. Yes. Amen. He wants you to be able to speak about the things that you have seen and you have heard. This is what a witness does. This is what God has called you to. This is why he gave you his spirit. Don't quench it. Let God rise up within you, feel the power of his spirit, and speak his word without that self-consciousness that, that withholds, without, without feeling such embarrassment about, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm different and I'm, I'm a Christian and they're not going to receive this well. That's okay. You'd be surprised. You would be surprised how well people receive uh, a, a, an offer to pray with them. You would, you would be surprised how well people would receive your testimony and what God has done in your life. Oh, there's going to be some that walk away. There's going to be some that scoff. It's not going to hurt you. you know, sticks and stones, okay? But don't quench the spirit. 
That's what Paul is telling us here. Let the Spirit rise up within you and do the work that God has called you to do. And despise, now, now, do not despise prophesying. Don't, don't look at things that might appear wacky in your eyes and, 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 and think of them as, that's just, that's just way off. That's, that, they, they might just be supernatural manifestations of God. Okay, despise not prophesying. And, and are there wackos in the world? You bet there are. But God is working in this world. God performs miracles in this world. I mean, and God performs miracles through, through people that are uh, maybe you know, not like you necessarily, but he worked through a donkey. You know, he, can work, he can work with anybody. So make sure that you are open to God's supernatural moving in your life and in your midst. Don't close it off because of we're here in New England in the heart of you know, this, this academic bastion of knowledge. And we can sometimes let our intellectual minds block off the supernatural that God wants to do right in front of our eyes. Let your hearts and minds be open to the supernatural is, is what Paul is saying here. Despise not prophesying. God is going to work in this. And even more and more, as the days get closer, God is going to work supernatural things. And you might not understand it, and, and you might even pull back from it. Look at what happened in the Gadarenes. When Jesus took that demoniac that was naked in the cemetery, and, and they came and found him clothed and in his right mind, they were like, that's great, leave. Why? Because they weren't able to receive the, 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 the power, the supernatural power of God in their very midst. Don't let that happen to you. Right. Amen. Despise not prophesying. Examine all things and firmly hold on to what is good. That means don't just, don't just take my word for it. And search, be like, be, be Bereans, okay? Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Right? We, we believe in God's word, the infallibility of God's word, and, and I want you to be able to, to look to God's word and say, yep, that's what's preached and that's what we believe in. It's right there in black and white. We, we need to, to make sure that we, we thoroughly examine and, and, we, and we need to seek to discern God I mean, in the things that he's, he's speaking to us. When I get up here to, to preach God's word to you, um, I... I I'm just giving you what he's given to me. But it's up to you to receive it, yes. right? It's up to you to interpret it, to, 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 to allow God to let that word work in your life. I, I, there are times I am absolutely sure that God is only speaking to one or two people when, when, when certain words come out of my mouth. I, I rarely know who they are, but I, I know that there are people that, that God is targeting, if you will, to receive something from him. And, and that's not me. Trust me on that, okay? If, if you're out there and you think that somehow I am calling you out and reading your mail in front of every, that's not how I work. I, I don't roll that way. I will never, ever speak to somebody who have, might have an issue, who might be even borderline disorderly. I will never deal with that from this pulpit. But God might, okay? So, so just know that, that, that if, if something comes across from here that, that you take personally, Receive it. Examine it. Yes. You know, see if maybe it's God trying to, to get through a roadblock. I mean, because he loves you. And he wants, he wants you. He wants you so much to be saved. Yes. Amen. So allow God's spirit to, 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 to lead you and avoid all appearance of evil. I mean, don't just avoid evil. Avoid the appearance of evil. That means keep your reputation intact. Because, why? Because you're a witness. Because people know that you go to that strange church down on Broadway. They know that you're that church that believes in talking in tongues and, and, and you're not like some of the other churches around. They know that. And, and, and you know what? When people fall, it doesn't... It, you know, God, God can deal with that when, when people fall away, when people fall into sin. He, he can deal with that and he knows it's going to happen. I mean, but it hurts the kingdom of God whenever it happens. And so what Paul is saying here is don't give the world an excuse to walk away from God. 
Uh, I talked to you about my testimony, how that uh, you know, back in the days of Jim Baker and, and some of the other you know, big name televangelists had, had turned me away from God and if it hadn't been for, for what they did, I might have come to God a whole lot sooner than I did because I was looking at the man and not looking at the power of God, right? So, so what we do can impact how people view the kingdom of God. And that's what Paul is saying here. Avoid even the appearance of evil. Don't give arms to the character assassins. Right? Disarm them by your good works. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen, amen. So, so it's, it's, it's only after Paul tells them all these things that they need to do that he, he lets them know that he's going to then pray for their total and complete sanctification by the God of all creation. He prays specifically that God would, would, um, would sanctify us and make us whole in three ways. The, the word completely, I think, in the modern translations is actually translated in the King James as holy, sanctify you wholly in spirit and in soul and in body. And he, he calls these each out because really that's how we are made up as beings, as created beings of God. These are parts of who we are. And let me just tease that out a little bit for you because I, I think it's important to understand this, when this, this idea. We, we hear that term body, soul, and spirit a lot. And I want to try to, to kind of put some flesh on those bones so we can really kind of understand. If you think about it as a bullseye, if you will, with, the, with spirit being that very center dot, and then soul being the next ring around it, and body being the next ring around that, these concentric circles, that, that's kind of who we are and how we're made by God. Right? The very essence of of, of what God gave us, that, that essence of life, what he breathed into man to make him a living soul, that's our spirit. It's, he breathed his spirit into us. And we've got this, this spirit inside, that's where we connect to God. That's where we're, we have this hole that needs to be filled by God but we, because man walked away from him. That's where what sin has corrupted, right? So the, the, the idea that, uh, that we need God's spirit in there is because but with our own human spirit, we're never, ever going to get to heaven. We need the Spirit of God in there and our deepest being. And that's what being filled with the Holy Ghost is all about. You must receive the Spirit of God. Can I say that again? You must be born again of water and of spirit. If, if you, 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 can't, you can't do this on your own. You can try as hard as you might, but you need the Spirit of God inside. And yes, the initial evidence of having received God's Spirit is speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Amen. That's, what it, that's how it reads in the Bible. When It happened in Acts chapter 2. It, it happened in Acts chapter 19. It happened in Acts chapter 10. I'll read all of these examples of, of God filling people with his spirit, and tongues is always there. I, I talked about this as well, I think, in a recent study or, or, or message that I brought across. The tongue is the most unruly member of our body. It is the very last thing James tells us in his epistle that, that, uh, that we let go of. And, and I I'm convinced that that is why speaking in tongues is the evidence of receiving God's spirit is because when we allow God control of our tongue, that means he has total control of us. Amen. I don't know why I went there. Somebody needed to hear that. Amen. So we're, we're talking about spirit and soul and body, right? So the, the spirit is that part that, that God needs to get in there and fill up inside us. The soul is who makes you who you are. Think of this as your personality. As a matter of fact, the Greek word translated as soul is psyche, uh, is, is the same word we get psychology from, right? So it's the, the soul, it makes you an individual. The soul is why identical twins who have the exact same DNA can have totally different personalities because they have different souls. Right? This, is, this is what surrounds the, the spirit. The, it contains the spirit, amen? This is who you are. This I mean, is where God wants to, to work. First, he, he changes us in spirit. I mean, his grace allows his spirit inside us, and that starts to work on our soul. This is the, 
think of it as another word that, that comes across is mind, right? When we think about psychology, it's about the, the gray matter here, the mind. When, when the Bible talks about don't be conformed I mean, to this world, but, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, yeah. this is God working on your soul yeah. and changing you into who he's created you to be. Amen. Shaping you and molding you into a child of God. Amen. And then there is the body. The body is, is just this flesh and blood. It's what interacts with the physical world. It's, 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 it's where our senses are, of test, t- touch and taste and sight and smell. And it's, it's where, where those senses are. And, and, and again, the way that we interact with the world. And yes, God transforms that as well. But can I tell you that there's a whole lot of people that want to change that outside. They want to change the body, but the soul hasn't been changed. And this is what Jesus talked about when he looked at the Pharisees and said, oh, you look great on the outside, but you're whited sepulchers. It's all whitewashed and beautiful, but inside it's full of dead man's bones. When we're born again, we need to let God work on us from the inside out. Amen. Amen. We need to allow God to, to, to work, and we need to have patience as he works with others. Amen. Let him, let him get deep down in your spirit and work on that soul. And eventually, yes, the body will change. We will not look this. We won't dress the way that we dress. We won't go to the places that we went to. We won't say the things that we said. We won't want the things that we wanted. I'm talking about the new birth here. And that's what Paul was talking about when he said, when he prayed that the, that the spirit of God would, would sanctify wholly, completely, He prays to God that our whole spirit and soul and body would be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is is what he has called upon us, amen, as as a church to be so that we could be that perfect bride when Jesus comes back again. So let me jump now to the first letter to to the Corinthians. um, And you can go here if you want to in in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to have a communion service this morning. Well, what, what did any of that have to do with communion? Well, a, a, a lot, a lot, amen. We, what, we're, what we're talking about is, is, is God, amen, working with his people. How does God do this? How, how is it that God can sanctify us? Well, it's through his spirit, amen, his spirit that empowers us, that changes us on the inside, but he can't do that and won't do that without us. And so, yes, we have to be willing participates, participants in this process of sanctification, of being made holy. God wants us to be more and more like him each and every day. He wants us to be more and more like him. Yeah. Amen. So, so, yes, we are going to have a communion service today to, to, to recognize the one who died for our sins. Amen. So that his spirit amen, could then come to us. He said when he was walking upon this earth, look, um, if if you're thirsty, you can can come to me and and I can give you living water that's going to flow out of your belly. I I can give you water that's going to refresh you and revive you and and you can be made whole. And, and the Bible tells us in John chapter 7, he was talking about the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost wasn't given because Jesus wasn't yet glorified. Well, in order for Jesus to be glorified, he had to die on a cross. And this is a point that we need to remember always. The reason that we're gathered here, the reason that we can do the things that Paul called on us to do, I mean, is because we have a Savior who died for us. Amen. He died for us and he loves us so much that he wants us to, he wants us to, to seek him, to serve him, to be like him. Amen. So that we can, again, walk into that perfect place of paradise that he's prepared for us. So in the, in the first letter to the Corinthians, the apostle Paul explained the importance of communion. And that it was, that was a, a, it was symbolic of the sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross. That he, he died to take our sins away. And he told us, and it's interesting the way he puts this, to examine ourselves, to meditate upon what that sacrifice means for us, and to think seriously about the way that we have responded to the salvation that's been made available to us. Now, that, that, you won't find those exact words in there, but that's, that's what God spoke to me. 
when I pondered those words. What, what, why are we examining ourselves and, and what really does that mean? This is what God spoke to my heart, that he wants us as we prepare to, to have this communion service to, to look upon ourselves and think about the way that we have received the salvation that, that God has made available to us and to, to, to make sure that we're all right with God, to examine ourselves and, and to recognize our faults and flaws. Now, I'm not saying that if you're not perfect, you can't take communion today. That, no, that's not, that's, not what it, that, that's not the examination. The examination is to actually recognize our faults and flaws and bring those to God and say, God, I've still got work to do, but I, I want you. I need you. And so it's, it's almost a time of repentance that, that I'm calling for here. And so what I would like to do is just take a few moments this morning before we have our communion service to just quietly among yourselves, just, just meditate on your walk with God. Examine yourself as Paul has called us to do before we receive communion this morning.